and I could afford to do it. And um, I didn't want my son hospitalized, so I said, what's my alternative? I'll bring him to Italy where he doesn't need to be hospitalized. He can live a more normal life. And I wanted to help others, and I wanted to push ahead to research. So I started a company in 1993. From 1995 to 2004, I was partners with John Walton of Walmart. I mean, really, John, great guy. He died in 2005, I believe. But John and his wife had a son, Lucas, who, thank God, today is 34, um, he had a horrible disease called Wilms tumor. They wanted to cut off half of his lungs. Um, but we had in Argent and Butyrate an application for Wilms tumor. So the Walton family uh, invested like $20 million with me. You know, they invested $20 million and took over our project. And we were partners from 1995 to 2004 in Beacon Pharmaceuticals. And then uh, John said, look, it, um, his son actually went to Mexico and, uh, you know, ate herbs and did all of these uh, kind of holistic things that never took out his lung and is a healthy man today. Um, and John called me up one day. I was on the trading floor in Chicago, and he said, Pat, you know what? My son is doing fine, and I want you to go help little Rocco. I'm going to give you Beacon. Just like that. $20 million, All of the patents we had in there. He gave it to me, just like that. Just handed you the whole entire company. Just that. And um, I was negotiating with Memorial Sloan Kettering because I knew that gene therapy would cure my son and sickle cell disease. That will see me as my son's disease. I knew it. When you say gene therapy, what exactly do you mean? So when we talk about gene therapy for us, we basically take the HIV virus and we disarm it. So now it's an empty school bus. And we put the gene that we want to get into the patient, the defective gene, in our case, the beta globin gene. And we make a bunch of school buses with a bunch of beta globin genes in them. Then we take stem cells from the patients and we incubate them with the beta globin gene, which is in the school bus. This is called a lentiviral vector, the HIV vector. It gets into the stem cells and we give them back to the patient. He or she is asymptomatic. They're cured. And there's been almost 100 people now cured that way. What, cured with no recurrences of anything? Yes. No I symptoms mean, or anything? For four or five, six years. We actually treated three patients <clears throat> from 2012 to 2015 with Memorial Sloan Kettering using our product. And two out of three of those patients, after nine years, have reductions in transfusions of 43%. Now, having said that, that product was made in 2009. Today, if we make that product, which we're making it now at the University of Tennessee and Southern Illinois University with uh, doctors uh, Andy Wilbur and uh, Frank Park, uh, Christopher Ballas, um, these are our people, we're going to cure our patients. Wow, that's fascinating. And so what currently are you doing with your medical center in Italy? My medical center in Italy is my son's restaurant. We closed oh, now it's a restaurant. Yeah, we closed the medical center when he no longer could do the experimental medicine. When he couldn't, you know, be hooked up to this pump, you know, with all of this copious amounts of water going into him for uh, 16 hours a day or whatever it was. We be and Holy they shit. discovered, you know, the antibodies for AIDS and hepatitis C. So our blood, you know, our blood is infinitely more secure today. Mm -hmm. So my son still transfuses every 20 days. He does iron chelation. And we closed the, the uh, medical center because it wasn't needed any longer for that. And uh, today he has a restaurant inside of it. So he does a blood transfusion every how many days? 20 days. 20 days. What is that like? Well, it's, uh, wow. I mean, there's no expression or... Uh, no words that can give you a real feeling of what it's like sitting there and watching the kind of blood come out of this little plastic sack and going into your son's body. But it's a lifesaver. And um, there are a lot of people that have it a hell of a lot worse. Yeah. I can't imagine what that must be like to have to do that every 20 days. Think of the sickle cell disease patients who luckily my son doesn't go through the horrible, horrible strokes and i mean kids even mm. five six seven years old just excruciating pain because 
their red blood cells are sickling and blocking up their veins and their capillaries. And just <clears throat> unimaginable pain. And there's no way to know when they're going to come. And, <laughs> I mean, it's just incredible. Um, and let's hope, we're hoping, we believe that the lentiviral vectors like ours need to have an insulator. Now, Bluebird Bio, the company that sabotaged my product, actually, is trying to get approved. And the FDA will let them know shortly if they will or not be approved. They're asking $2.1 million per patient, which is ridiculous, by the way. Just ridiculous. And, you know, they, they uh, say, well, you know, sickle cell costs 150000 a year to treat a patient. So, you know, in 15 years, uh, we got our money back. That, that's not right. You know, the re- then they'll try to say, well, it costs so much to make medicine. No, it doesn't. It costs so much to give the corrupt CEOs and the minions, right. all of the money and all of the funds that are dishing all of the money out, you know, to get their money back and to do their pyramid schemes with the stock market. Yeah, that costs millions and billions maybe, but it's not that the research costs that kind of money. You said that you got, you took him to a, a special hospital in uh, San Francisco and uh, they started treating your son. Yeah. What happened next? Sure. So um, I, I, at the time was in Germany, uh, you know, because the markets were going, excuse me, were going electronic. I traded on the floor of the New York or the Chicago Board of Trade, Chicago Board Option Exchange. I had memberships, in New York Stock Exchange, et cetera. But at that time, things were going electronic. I realized that I was in Germany for a deal. And uh, I got a call from my uh, uh, my son's mother, and she said, look, at Rocco's not moving. You know, he's like, he's tired, and he's, he's, he's very pale, you know, pale. And I said, well, take him in, you know, take him to his pediatrician, see what's going on. And he said, he's got thalassemia. And um, so I looked it up, and Miles of Facts came in, because back then the Internet wasn't so easy to get all right. of the articles about hematology. And, in fact, he had thalassemia. We were told that he would die by the time he was 14. And that he needed to transfuse immediately. I didn't want to do that, so we ended up at San, in San Francisco, and he did experimental medicine. Then, because we didn't want to do it, we didn't want to be hospitalized, and we couldn't afford to keep him doing the experimental medicine in uh, California, we moved uh, to Italy forever, basically, and opened up a medical center, and he did it there. Um, uh, slowly but surely, um, there were other uh, disease, uh, other, uh, what made you want to move to Italy? What told you that it, you know, what was the, what influenced that decision? Well, first of all, uh, you know, I was growing up in Italian. I mean, uh, my, I grew up in an Italian neighborhood. Um, you know, Italian was the, for, you know, second language. And, um, when I made money, I went to Italy, visited my grandparents' people and uh, my mother's people. And I loved it. And it was just, you know, a great place to be. And then when, uh, my son, was doing the experimental medicine in, in the hospital in San Francisco, uh, I decided he couldn't live like that. I mean, I wanted to avoid the transfusions, but I couldn't afford, you know, whatever it was, <clears throat> 70000 for 40 days, and I didn't want him hospitalized. So we decided, and Italy has a, a, a more liberal kind of attitude about medicine in a lot of ways, and he didn't need to be hospitalized to do it there. So we moved 20 miles from my grandparents' house. I opened up a medical center. And we started treating a lot of patients, 38 patients at one time. We had on, in 1997, 1998, on arginine butyrate and isobutyramide. That seems like a crazy thing. I just opened a medical center. 